So badinage is a subject that sometimes gets people a little excited in the wine world. It's one of those dirty words today like pijage. Uh, nobody does badinage, nobody does pijage. Uh, even if you sometimes see the dardine, which is a device used for for doing batonnage, uh, dripping in the corner of the cellar when you come and visit. Um, so what exactly is batonnage? Well, batonnage is when you take a device like this, you put it inside the barrel, and you stir, agitate the lees, which settle to the bottom of the barrel, all of the solids, the yeast cells, mostly dormant rather than dead, as people say, and you agitate them and you'll see that uh, uh, the wine becomes cloudy with the, with the lees, um, looks, you know, creamy and... Uh, the leaves are, are taken back into suspension. Uh, why is it controversial? Well, I think because uh, batonnage, one of the, the consequences is it can sort of uh, fatten the wines, make them a bit richer, more textural because of uh, a sort of extraction from the leaves during the aging process, promoting that. Uh, it's also been associated by some people as a potential cause of premature oxidation. Now, in fact, it's, it's a bit more complicated. Batonnage has a lot of different purposes. Uh, one of the purposes, often people will do it during fermentation, if the fermentation is sluggish or a bit reductive, to try to um, bring some oxygen into the barrel and to, to encourage the yeast activity to get going and to, to mitigate any sort of tendency to, to extreme reduction when the leaves compact on the bottom of the barrel. Um, so it's, it's useful for that. It's, um, it's also a technique that's not necessarily inherently oxidative. It becomes oxidative if you don't have very much lees in your barrel or any lees. In fact, if you have very clean wine and you stir it, it does nothing uh, except to, to oxygenate and to, to fatigue the wine. It's, it's also oxidative, I suppose, in the sense that um, wines during the alcoholic and malolactic fermentation release carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide saturates the wine and sort of protects it. Now, when you batonage, particularly if you batonage very aggressive, uh, aggressively, uh, you, you uh, break that solution, you draw out the carbon dioxide, you degas the wine, so it's less well protected. So if you're, if you're uh, stirring after malolactic fermentation, the gas isn't going to be replenished anyhow, and, and the wine is going to be evolving in a more accelerated rate, or it's going to need sulfur dioxide to protect it rather than its, its carbon dioxide. Uh, but in fact, I think it's an interesting technique, and especially in a very high acid, sort of tangy vintage, there's something to be said for it, um, and I'm, I'm doing it here with some added uh, As you saw, I only stirred it for, what, 15, 20 seconds, which is enough already to bring the lees into suspension, in fact. Um, so there's no need to overdo such things and, and uh, veer into excess, and I uh, will stop, in fact, um, uh, after another couple of weeks, stirring once a week, um, I think that's uh, that's ample. And, and, you know, as with any winemaking technique, one of the most important uh, things is to remain somewhat uh, reasonable and, and uh, not to exaggerate.